Welcome to a short tutorial showing how schools can tell digital stories with PowerPoint. PowerPoint is an application in a class called Digital Presentation Software. For most people, PowerPoint makes slideshows with slides that follow automatically, either timed or with a click of the screen as I'm doing here, in a somewhat linear, slide after slide fashion. But PowerPoint can also be used for what some people call non-linear representations. With this model, elements can be created with links to any slide in the deck, not just the next one. The benefit of this model is viewer choice over when and what they look at and listen to. Adding links to the web only increases the depth of learning. This story can be projected and narrated live by students reading their text or the narration can be pre-recorded for groups and individuals to listen to at a time of their own choosing. What curricular uses can we make of digital storytelling? There are many across the curriculum. In this English language arts social studies example, grade three students can respond to their love of place and describe their experience living with the land. Or grade seven students can explain a winter activity to attract people to their circumpolar location or show circumpolar challenges or in grade 10 terrestrial systems in experiential science students demonstrate interactions between organisms and their environment. How do these program elements work? This action button takes us back one slide, this one forward one, this action button takes us to our first slide. We can play our pre-recorded narration. There are places in the NWT you can go to in the winter that you could only imagine going to in the summer. And link to the article where this Creative Commons licensed image came from. What drives this digital story are the images and text. Let's insert an image, text, and some action buttons for a new slide. Start with insert, picture, Berry Hill, insert, drag to resize, and let's draw a box for text. Insert, text box, And I'll paste in some text that I have prepared ahead of time to save time. And make that text the same size as the other slides. Let's add and program a few action buttons. Insert. Shapes. Action buttons. Back button. Action settings automatically appears. Hyperlink to previous slide. OK. Let's do a forward button. Action button forward. Hyperlink to next slide. And finally, let's add a home button that will link to the first slide. Hyperlink to first slide. Let's change the uh, color of this by going to Home, Shape Fill, and make that orange. Now, let's program this slide to advance only using these action buttons. We'll go to Transitions, Advance Slide, and we'll deselect, as it is now, on mouse click since this would make it possible to advance by clicking any place on the slide and finally deselect the seconds or minutes of the narration I don't want the slide to advance automatically after the recorded narration one trick is to duplicate this slide so as not to have to start from scratch on your next slide your action buttons font size and general look and feel are preserved. 
to do this, just highlight the slide and go Control D. And there you've duplicated that slide. Linked knowledge is a key component of the 21st century. Through hyperlinks, we can easily provide further depth and richness to our writing. In this part of the story, a reader may want to know more about the location and height of Berry Hill and its relative size to other NWT peaks. A good web source, such as peakery.com, can not only teach the reader, but also the writer, more about what it is like to be in this geographic area. Copy the URL of the site, highlight the text you want to link to, insert, hyperlink, paste the URL, OK. Now those words are linked to a website. Let's test it. Slideshow from current slide, Berry Hill, and we have a successful connection. Let's minimize this and return to our story. Let's add some narration to a slide. Among the benefits already mentioned, pre-recording narration could be a helpful choice for a shy student who might not read their narration to a live audience. I'm using a simple external mic with my PC. Let's go to the slideshow menu, record slideshow, start recording from current slide. When I'm done recording, I'll press the X. To our surprise, as we approached the top of Berry Hill, three caribou suddenly jumped in front of us and ran along the trail. We we're all surprised and curious. I'll place the audio icon that has appeared in front of the text. Let's program the audio to only play when clicked and to keep this audio icon visible. Select the audio icon as I've done here. Playback. Start on click. Deselect Hide during show. This tutorial will end with a review of some of the instructions covered in this video. Enjoy digital storytelling.